Hi guys, recently we looked at the Asher Racing F64 V3. A fantastic wheel without a doubt, but is it really worth the £300 that it costs on top of the F28 SC? That's more than the asking price of the Fanatic McLaren wheel. We know the open sim wheels are a little more expensive than those of the more locked down ecosystems, but let's explore what differentiates the two wheels and I'll let you come to your own conclusions on if this is really worth those extra notes. Let's first look at the general layout. The two wheels have the same grips and form factor, so if you like how one feels, then you have no problem with the other. I've spoken about the grips in both wheel reviews, so won't go into too much detail on that. I personally find the material nice to hold, and it has the flexibility to be easily cleaned and used in both gloved and ungloved hands. It is a bit of a dust magnet, but that's only a minor concern. On the paddle front, on the back of the wheels, we see significant differences. Yes, the shifters are pretty much the same, but here we also have analog clutch paddles. These can be adjusted on the wheel, which allows us to tune in the game. This is great when you're trying to prepare for a standing start race with a new vehicle. It'd be nice if we could have hot swap profiles here, but it's not too much work to set this up in practice. So maybe I'm just nitpicking a little bit there. On the control side of things, the buttons are exactly the same across the two wheels, even down to the colours and guards that are used. The buttons feel great, but obviously aren't adding cost. When we move to encoders and rotaries, on the other hand, the multi-function sticks, aka funky switches, that we have on the F28 are not quite as good as those on the F64. And that's all down to the little aluminium nubs that we're given on the front of them. With the F28, they're okay. They're little flat discs, but on the F64, they are nicely contoured for the different uses of that particular multifunction switch. The F64 has an additional four encoders on top of this and two 12 position switches. The knobs are all aluminium and feel very comfortable underhand. Perhaps one potential flaw with the F64's aluminium knobs is that the ones used on the rotary encoders can feel a little bit sharp if you're not using gloves. One additional note that I didn't even consider when I was going through the Versus video is that actually the battery is quite a big deal for some people. With the battery in the F64, it is rechargeable. However, being a Lipoly, it might not last very long and may not be user serviceable. I'll reach out to Asher Racing and leave a comment to see if they have any ideas on replacing that battery. But if this is a concern for you, then the F28 might be a better choice because whilst the battery in there is not rechargeable, it will last a couple of years and is replaceable. Now, I personally value the features that the F64 has over the F28. It's hard to put a number on that value, but it's plain to see that Asher Racing have put a lot of attention to detail into the F64 V3. It'd be nice to have the same knobs on the F28 V2, and perhaps with a later revision they will. It'll help make those rotary encoders that you have on the F28 a little bit more usable, especially for VR racers. Right now, it feels too much of a compromise to use the F28 over the F64. The all aluminium construction of these wheels should mean that they stand the test of time and battery life shouldn't be an issue on either one of these wheels. But we're still talking about wheels that cost more than some people spend on their entire rig. With that in mind, I justify the expense of the F64 by its lack of compromise on any front, an unyielding wheel even when faced with a powerful direct drive. Couple that with many controls to aid your sim racing journey. You can make your own mind up about which wheel you'd prefer, if any. Ultimately, it's your choice and your wallet. Over the years, I've used a wide variety of different wheels and I can undoubtedly say the F64 is my favorite right now. 
Now I hope you've enjoyed looking through the F64 versus F28 and if you are thinking about purchasing either one of these wheels I hope that I've helped steer you in the direction that suits you best. If you do end up purchasing either of these wheels or in fact you already own one of them don't forget to leave a comment in this video because it will help other people to make a better decision when they come to purchasing. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you appreciate what I'm doing on this channel, don't forget to mash that subscribe button. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.